This video will focus around two topics, one of which is partial pressure and the other is solving for molar mass within a gas law type problem. Both of these topics came up in relation to our lab where we collected that uh, butane gas from little cartridges to figure out what the molar mass was experimentally. Okay. Now, one thing we had to do though experimentally was adjust our volume based on the fact that um, there is some water vapor in our tube. So to understand that, step one, when we put the methane gas in there, it forces the water out of the tube. Okay, why is it doing that? Well, of course the gas is taking up space. And as the gas is taking up space, it's pushing out the molecules of liquid water and replacing it by the molecules of the butane. I don't know why it says methane. Okay. Now, eventually, once we've filled our volume up to like, you know, 45 or 47 or whatever, we assume that the pressure inside the eudiometer with the gases is the same as the pressure in the atmosphere on the outside on any given day in any given room that you're doing the experiment in, okay? Why or how can we assume that the pressure in the eudiometer is the same as the pressure outside? Well, if you think about it, as you're putting in those molecules of gas, that gas is expanding to take up some space. But the space it takes up is always dependent on temperature and pressure, right? If the gas is colder, the same particles will take less space. Um, and then depending on the external pressure and the pressure applied, it's gonna take up a different amount of space, okay? So the gas are moving around hitting each other, but both inside and outside, the inside is the butane gas, the outside is the atmospheric gas. So I would, again, picture sort of the scenario we had set up with the liquid and the inverted tube, okay? The reason the water is inside the tube in the first place is because the pressure is of the atmosphere is pushing down on the water and pushing it into the tube. Now eventually, when we have gases inside here, those gases are pushing down the water, and we get to an equilibrium when the amount of pressure pushing on the outside equals the amount of pressure pushing on the inside. So that's why we can assume the pressure inside is equal to the pressure outside. But the problem is, inside our tube is not just the butane gas we've put in because our water right our liquid water is always evaporating and turning into gases so inside that tube i have water as well as uh, that butane gas i'm sorry i kept writing methane everywhere so then if we want to experimentally determine what is the pressure just from the butane inside, we have to take into consideration how much of the gas pressure inside is because of the water and how much of the gas pressure inside is the butane. Luckily, it's very easy because there's this law of partial pressures. The idea behind the law of partial pressures is that if you know the pressure total or the pressure of each gas, the pressure of each gas is gonna add up to be the pressure total, okay? Um, so in our lab then, that means the pressure of methane plus the pressure of water is going to equal that atmospheric pressure because that's when the dials essentially stop moving. That's when the water level stops moving. Because it's such a common occurrence to gather um, a gas through water displacement over the surface of water, there are actual tables of vapor pressure that exist. Okay? So for us in lab, if we measure the uh, temperature of our water to be like 19.8, then we know the pressure of that water inside the glass tube is 17.319, for example. Okay? So because it's such a common experiment, we can essentially just use a reference table and do the simple subtraction to get you there. But this is also something we can use in more complicated problems to solve for um, a different piece of information. Okay, so for example, a place partial pressure is used a lot is for scuba tanks. So within scuba tanks, you have not 100% oxygen because you don't normally breathe 100% oxygen. So in the tank, it's some percent oxygen and some percent nitrogen. So for example, if I had a tank that was a five liter scuba tank, um, and the pressure, because I was like, you know, one, um, 
I think it's one mile under the surface or something like that, is two ATMs, and the temperature of the tank is 27 degrees Celsius. And the question is, if I know 2.86 grams of oxygen are in the tank, how much of the pressure of two ATMs is nitrogen? Right? And that's what I'm trying to solve for. So if I want to know the pressure due to nitrogen, I know the pressure due to nitrogen plus the pressure due to oxygen is going to be the pressure total. And in this problem, I told you the pressure total is 2. Okay? So if this is my x, if what I don't know is the pressure of nitrogen, then somehow with the data presented to me, I need to be able to figure out the pressure of oxygen. Okay? So let's start identifying variables. So I gave you the volume of 5. Okay? Um, I gave you a temperature of 27, which we're going to add 273 to, so we're going to have 300. Um, the R I'm going to choose is for ATM because I'm given two ATM. Okay. So this looks like a Pivner problem because I've got one of, each pro one of each variable. I have a volume, I have a temperature, I have an R. So now I have a P. I know my P is, is 2 if I'm talking about the total. But the problem is that I, the variable I'm trying to identify right here is the pressure of oxygen. And that's what I don't know, right? So that's my X. I don't know my pressure of my oxygen. So in order to solve this, I must be able to find my number of moles of oxygen. And I can because I gave you our number of grams of oxygen. So if you're given grams, you can always go to mole using the molar mass, given that these are diatomics. So if you put that in your calculator, um, you end up getting around uh, 0.0893655, lots of numbers, for your moles of oxygen. So that's what we'll use for our N. Okay. So then to set up this problem, will go the unknown P that's filling my five liters equals that N I just calculated, lots of digits, R that I chose, and then the T that was given to me. Okay. What we find is the X, which remember our X was defined as our partial pressure of oxygen, ends up being about 0.44 ATM. Okay. So then for the final answer, what's the partial pressure of nitrogen? Well, now we know this number is 0.44. So essentially what plus 0.44 is 2.0? And if we subtract that away, we end up getting that the pressure due to just nitrogen is 1.56 ATM. So that's a way of using pressure to solve. Um, if you notice, one thing I didn't do was like subdivide my volume because when it comes to gases, they fill their container regardless of what else is in there. So having another gas in the same space doesn't change the volume the gas takes up. The last type of problem, and this is a problem that we did in the lab, is we can actually use Pivnert to solve for molar mass. Okay? So what molar mass is, if you remember, is how many grams of something we have per mole. So given this problem, it says, I have a reaction that's producing an oxide of nitrogen, which means some NO compounds, some number of Ns and some number of Os. That gas has a mass of 1.21. It occupies a volume of 67 milliliters, which I'm going to change into liters. It has a temperature of 23, which means I have 296 Kelvin. Yeah. Um, and then a pressure of 0 0.987. So from this, I would choose the R of ATM, because that's what I have. Um, and this is everything except for N. So I've already set up a problem where I can take the pressure uh, due to the gas the volume okay, equals some number of n's times the r I chose times the t, and that will allow me to calculate the n for this unknown gas. Okay? So if I calculate that out, I get this. So that's how many moles. So now based on this problem, I know that gas has a mass of 1.21, 
And in that number of grams, it has 0 0.0275 mole. So to solve for molar mass, it's as simple as just taking the number of grams and dividing it by the number of moles, which is going to give me a gram per mole ratio. Okay. So if I stick that in my calculator, I get the answer 44.02 grams per mole. So that's the answer to calculate the molar mass. But the second thing I'm supposed to do is figure out the formula. So to figure out the formula, I know it has to have at least one N and one O. So one N plus one O is about 30.006. So looking at that compared to my thing I solved for, which is 44.02, I can see the difference between those is about 14, and one N is gonna be 14. So if I had two Ns and one O, that would get me to my final uh, calculated molar mass of 44, and thus my answer. So the foundational idea here is just the idea that to calculate molar mass, you need a gram and you need a mole, and PIVNERT will give us our mole component. So there's a lot more math here to kind of play with and do, so go ahead and try that practice and have a nice night.